Rings of Power is over. The momentum for this show, if it had any, I believe it was artificial momentum, uh, has now ran into a wall. And what does anybody have left to talk about? House of the Dragon, that's right. I'm going to get into a couple of things here. I just wanted to touch on one thing. Where are the numbers for anything past episode two with Rings of Power? Why is that not out? Why can't we see anything on those numbers? Now, Nielsen is putting out numbers on the ages of the people watching the show. This is from Business Insider India. Uh, The Rings of Power appears to be struggling to connect with younger viewers. And they cite some data here. Amazon's Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, may have struggled to attract young viewers. 71% of its audience was 35 years or older at the season one midway point, according to Nielsen. Cool. What was the viewership number (laughs) for, for those episodes as well? I'd like to know. I really would like to know. It's funny to me that we don't have any data on that. Unless I'm missing it somewhere. They keep talking about the first two episodes. Oh, it did so good this season. Look at the first two episodes. Well, what about three, four, five, six, seven, eight? I'd really like to know what those numbers are. Because I can guarantee you they're nowhere near as high as those first two episodes. That's why they keep talking about the first two damn episodes. Because that's all they have. I guarantee you this show dropped in its ratings because nobody's talking about it. Nobody's talking about it. It barely ever trends. Uh, If you look at the Google trends, it's not really that impressive when you compare it to House of the Dragon, which, by the way, doesn't have this problem connecting with younger viewers. As they point out here, 71% of the show's audience is 35 years or older in the U.S., according to Nielsen's latest streaming data from Thursday, which measured through the show's fourth episode by comparison, 68% of the audience for HBO's own fantasy series, House of the Dragon, is in the 18 to 49 age range. That's a much healthier age range, by the way. That gives you a lot of generations of people. Like, that's a much better age range. You've got young and you've got older people. Everything you could hope for as a network. Uh, Look at this one right here. Uh, Other data suggests the limits of the show's reach as well. Uh, They talk about this right here, like on TikTok, the House of the Dragon hashtag on TikTok has 656 million views, while the House of the Dragon hashtag has 5.4 billion. Well, not exactly a perfect commentary on the Rings of Power's popularity, it does suggest a limited appeal for younger viewers compared to the competition as TikTok's user user base skews young. And then the Google Trends data, which I think is pretty powerful. We're going to get into that for a minute because Netflix is throwing shade at both of them, which I find funny. House of the Dragon is 119 times more in demand than the average series worldwide, while while the Rings of Power is 67 times more in demand, according to the data from Parrot Analytics. The company measures audience demand based on a number of factors, including online engagement. I mean, I think that's pretty impressive. And then they talk about the two-episode premiere again. Like, this isn't something spectacular. I want to know what comes after that first two episodes. Now, there's a link here to some Nielsen data. Who's watching House of the Dragon and the Rings of Power? New numbers shed light on the audience for both shows. Uh, Nothing on what's going on after those first two episodes. It's almost like, does does Amazon have these companies under an NDA? I'd like to know House of the Dragon's viewership as well after the first three. I'd like to know how they've done. I'd like to compare those numbers, but for some reason we don't have them. And I've been looking, here's today, just searching Rings of Power. It's still just uh, all these uh, media simps trying to drum up appeal, which doesn't work. Oh, we're so, what to expect for season two? 
who even knows? They're not going by the cannon, so you can't you you can't really count on charting that out to see where they're gonna go. Shows trash. Uh, Netflix getting in on some shade throwing. Netflix throws serious shade on HBO and Amazon by sharing Google Trends graph showing how hit show Dahmer crushed competition from House of the Dragon and Rings of Power. Which I believe, by the way, a show like Dahmer, and no offense, I, mean, I love House of the Dragon. I think it's an amazing show. Really looking forward to the season final. But Dahmer has more appeal to everybody than a fantasy show. Not not everybody is going to find Game of Thrones appealing. Dahmer, though, people are obsessed with ser- serial killers. I'm not shocked at all that this show is beating it. What I do find funny is that Netflix is throwing shade. I don't know how much shade they are entitled to throw considering their streaming, like their sub numbers are way down. Paid subscriber growth. I mean, look at this. 2021, like, that's bad. When you, Especially when you compare it to the fact that they were pretty much kind of growing pretty drastically over the years. And then it's just a a quick drop in 2021. I wonder what 2022 will look like. Anyway, uh, Netflix bragged about the success of Dahmer by sharing a Google Trends chart that compared it to HBO's House of the Dragon and Amazon's Rings of Power. The Google Trends chart was shared in the company's Q3 earnings report on Tuesday that showed Dahmer surpassed its competition in interest. Netflix added over 2 million subscribers, avoiding its third straight quarter of subscriber loss. It now has 223 million members worldwide. Dahmer is a really good show. Uh, I, I I don't want to take anything away from it. I thought that show was pretty good. Uh, it was very interesting how they made that show because I feel like they were trying to humanize him, which, you know, usually in this kind of stuff, they just paint them as and I'm not saying that they he definitely comes off as villain and I'm not saying he didn't deserve everything he got but the way they shot it they definitely uh made some choices that you just don't see a lot of people make when it comes to making these kinds of things I thought it was a fantastic show I'm gonna be honest uh, I thought it was really good Dahmer and House of the Dragon probably the two series that I've enjoyed the most this year so far, as long as House of the Dragon sticks the landing on that final, uh, I'll be I'll be pretty happy with that show. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Uh, just more Rings of Power lies running around. I want to know what's going on with that show's numbers. And, of course, Netflix throwing shade at everybody, which is always enjoy, enjoyable and funny. Let me know what you guys think. Also, if you would, check out my Rumble and my Locals. I'm doing exclusive Rumble live streams now did one the other day and it was a pretty good success. I'd like to keep that going. Uh, As far as this video goes, let me know what you think in the comments. Also, if you would, please like, subscribe, share the video. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit that notification bell. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Make sure to check out my locals. There's a link in the description. It's a fun community that I'm trying to build over here. If you don't want to support me on YouTube, you can come over here. None of that money goes to YouTube. You also can just come over here for free. But if you are a supporter over here, I do plan on doing an extra live stream once a month and throwing links to the supporters so you can actually come on and have a supporter live stream with me. Also, it's a good place to catch all of my content. You don't have to worry about notifications like YouTube. They'll definitely work over here. So come check out my locals.